So this is my title of my talk, and the background is our campus of Future University Faculty. Anyway, uh, these are my points today. We, I am in the field of computer science, particularly in AI, so I want to study intelligence in, in its abstract level. And uh, that science is different from analytical science, I mean, different from natural science or physics, and it belongs to the constructive or synthetic science that needs a different viewpoint that we call the end system view and a different uh, methodology. And the essence of the new constructive methodology is uh, evolutionary method. That's the point of my talk today. And why we need an end system view? We are for the study of intelligence. You know, if you just uh, adopt the natural science methodology, analytical methodology, that is the behavior of psychology, and that completely failed to explain what's going on in our brain. So we have to go inside our brain and see what's going on. So the, uh, particularly in AI, the methodology is that we have to construct a program. That might be a robot or whatever it, it could be, but we want to construct something and to observe its behavior and uh, compare it to a uh, natural intelligence of human being. So we need uh, something different. And here is what I call the uh, difference between NXO and the NXO system. The, the left hand side is the uh, you know, traditional analytical scientific view. If you want to observe the system, that's ideal of cycle. And the uh, researcher should be separated from that and the uh, so it's just like you know blocking something else, and the interaction should be as minimum as possible. And the uh, but the, uh, when I say the uh, end system view that the researcher is in the system, so it interferes with, with the system, and the interaction is you know not only. Uh, a lot, but uh, I think it's an uh, essential part of the study of the system. And of course, we need those two views, and uh, we have to use a uh, proper one when appropriate. But uh, today, I mainly talk about the right hand side. And the, uh, here is a very interesting observation the, uh, that viewpoint is quite related to the uh, language we use. And this is a uh, uh, very famous first sentence of Yasna Nikawa, who is a Nobel Prize winner in literature. And the, uh, it's translation. Actually, Sayas Dika is the, the person who introduced the Kawa to the rest of the world. So, so this translation is not ad hoc, way. it's not a low quality, way. it's a very high quality translation of the original Japanese sentence. So I want you to imagine the scene, what is described by this. So, so Japanese people, you know, imagine from the left hand side and the American people uh, imagine from the right hand side. And the result is something like that. You know, when you read Japanese, you are on a train going into a small country. But uh, if you read the uh, English sentence, you are outside the train, you know, just like a bird, you are in a sky or so you see a train coming out of the tunnel. So this is just one example, but I, I think you know there is a kind of deep relationship between the language we use and the way we think what we observe the world. So going back to the original Figure, you know, the left hand side is the uh, end of system view for Japanese view. You are in the train for you, you are in the system. And the right hand side is the analytical view. You are outside of the system. And related to that, you know, Harvard Simon wrote a book. Actually, he wrote a three version of the book of the same title, The Science of the Artificial. So he 
also you know, claim that the necessity of the different science that is artificial. And I, I don't have time to go into the details, but uh, anyway, the analysis and synthesis are kind of compared here. And Simon's view is something like that. And you know, this is a very naive view of analysis versus synthesis. You know, this analysis or synthesis is just a reverse reciprocal process of analysis. But uh, I claim this is a wrong view. I don't, I don't think this is the case. And why? So in synthesis, the parts are not given. You know, it's not a plastic, plastic model. You know, if someone already know the whole part and just uh, you know make uh, parts, that is easy. But uh, it's not a plastic, plastic model. We have to synthesize something new. So we don't know what the parts are unless we know the whole. But the uh, whole can be constructed unless we have the parts. So here is a kind of deadlock. How uh, we can solve this problem? And the answer, I think, is a loop. So, you know, you begin with some concept of a goal. You know, you have some image of what you want to construct and generate something, you know, to, to implement that. But uh, the point is that the generated thing will have um, an unpredicted uh, interaction with the environment. If there is no environment at all, then the, the whole system may be simple, but uh, particularly intelligent thing interact with the environment. And this interaction cannot be predicted beforehand. And we have to observe and uh, make an analysis. So this C2 is a kind of analytical part. So in my vision of uh, synthesis, you know, analysis is just a part of the loop. That's why I say that, that you know, synthesis is not the opposite direction of uh, analysis. And unlike the thing is probably different from the initial goal. So we we configure the initial goal again and generate a new next version and they did interact with the environment, we analyze that. So so this is a kind of continuous loop. So it doesn't it may not terminate. It, it just goes on and on. And I think this is a you know process of uh, synthetic or uh, constructive science. And evolution method comes here, you know, because we don't have a complete or clear view of the goal, you know, we are trying to do something and see its result and uh, change the original plan. So it is a kind of try, try and error thing. And also, the important thing is that the process itself of the complex and political system. So even after you analyze the difference, you cannot just fix it because you know, changing the part may affect other parts. So you can't directly control the behavior of the complex system. So here yeah, again, the evolution of method is the key here. And when I say evolution, I'm using it a very simplified way, just uh, these two, random generation plus uh, selection, nothing more. So you try to generate many things and uh, you select some of them due to some criteria and uh, that will be the result will be the next seed and uh, you just uh, repeat this uh, sequence. So when we run the synthetic group, you know, this generation and uh, selection is done by every loop. And I don't go into the detail, but uh, this is the uh, quote from Wikipedia of the genetic algorithm. And the point is that uh, it, it has uh, select and read as a you know, 
And uh, I briefly pointed out that there is a difference between our and both levels function independently, but the uh, body is configured in a very specific way to correspond to the function of mind. And uh, so this is my answer. And however, I have to prove that. And uh, this is my current research plan. I want to try to you know, construct a system of the multi-layered system to that the second level or third level will emerge. And this, this is my just plan. I, I didn't uh, do a lot with that, but uh, we begin with a very simple, could be one-dimensional or two-dimensional, but semi-automatic. But uh, the point is that each rule changes or evolves. And uh, when upper level behavior some kind of structure or behavior emerges, we need some kind of feedback from the upper level to the lower level to you know, fix the structure or the, fix the rule of the lower level. And so once some kind of new level emerges, then if it's fixed there, then we can talk about the evolution of the second level from there on, and uh, we can go on to the third level and fourth level, that, that kind of thing. The uh, similar thing in nature is a uh, you know, structure of cells. In, in the beginning of life, there was no structure of cells, but uh, once a cell emerged as a structure, then you know, it has a, it functions as to fix the, the, the structure you know, to reproduce its structure from then on. Uh, one of the biologists, uh, Marina Dan, she claimed that uh, there was only one cell 